This is Jay Connor, Real Estate Investing with Jay Connor. Welcome to the show. I'm known as the Private Money Authority. And if this is your first time to the show, a special welcome to you. This is where we talk all things about real estate, particularly single family homes. I'm so excited to have a very special guest on with me today that is just going to blow your socks off. This guy become a good friend of mine a few months ago, and I will introduce him in just a moment. But first, I just promised you I was going to plug you into the money to fund your deals. So you want to check out the website uh, at www.jayconner. We got it right here below on the screen. Jay Connor, J-A-Y-C-O-N-N-E-R.com forward slash money podcast. We got our next live event upcoming right around the corner. And that's where we're going to be uh, having private lenders at the event. We'll also be uh, teaching my four pillars of the business, how to find deals before other real estate investors even know they exist, getting your deals funded, how to sell any house in three days or less, and of course, automating the business. So check it out, www.jayconner.com forward slash money podcast. With that, y'all, I am so excited to have as my special guest today, Cody Hoffein, all the way from Salt Lake City, Utah. Cody, welcome to the show. How in the heck are you, my friend? I am so I'm honored to be here on the show with you, and I'm excited to uh, add value any way I can to your listeners. So let's let's rock and roll today, Jay. Man, thank you so much, Cody. You know, I first met you um, uh, a few months ago. And unbelievable, you were the master of ceremonies at the Wholesaling Inc. event, <laughs> annual event that I was at. You know, I thought I showed up to an event with energy, but man, you got me beat. Where you get all your energy? Where you get all your energy, man? Everyone thinks it's coffee. I don't even drink coffee. It's it's uh, it's just something I love to do. <laughs> oh, mercy! When I before we started the show, you talked about. Uh, uh, working out and you're recovering all that. So, so I mean, obviously taking, by the way, uh, Cody, the folks are looking at you and they're listening to you. So I love I'm, it. I love it. I hope the hair is all done for your crowd. <laughs> yeah. I got my hurricane hairspray on. So, you know, I'm, I'm good to go. so yes, yeah, so you, you regularly work out, right? Yeah. 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 That's part of the routine of, of keeping the energy a little bit higher. If not, I feel like that, that energy drops. I got you. I got you. So anyway, I mean, um, most of the folks here, uh, my listeners and followers may not have heard about you, Cody, and the rest of the team and Wholesaling Inc. So if you would give an overview, take a moment, give an overview on what Wholesaling Inc. is and what Wholesaling Inc. is all about. But then I want to come back and dive into the world of Cody. Let's do it. Let's do it. So Wholesaling Inc., to give you a, a, just a kind of a brief so they can understand really quickly what it is, is I truly believe it's the easiest way to get into real estate. It's something that allows you to get in with no money down. And so we're talking like literally side by side with you, Jay, on how you can do it with none of your own money getting invested. But wholesaling simply to break it down quickly is just the art of finding a deeply discounted property. Now, the 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 deal or the money to be made in real estate is always at the purchase. It's not the sell. And so many people think, oh, if I could sell this for 1 million, it's going to be amazing. But really it's how do we find off market, deeply discounted properties at 40, 50, 60 cents on a dollar. And that's really the art of wholesaling. So that's exactly what uh, we do at Wholesaling Inc. is Tom and I, we're business partners, awesome friendship, awesome relationship. What we do is we're just passionate about helping individuals a, get into real estate because it really is the place they need to be. It's an awesome, awesome opportunity. It's a great way to make a fortune in a short amount of time. I don't want to confuse that with it's a get rich quick. That's definitely not the case. You're going to work your tail off, but the rewards are amazing. And so just simple. We just help people find deeply discounted properties, 40, 50, 60 cents on the dollar so that they can then turn it for a huge profit through different exit strategies. Yeah. So you mentioned Tom. So that's Tom Kroll, K-R-O-L. Tom and I met for the first time uh, coming up on about a year ago. <clears throat> and I tell you what just attracted me to Tom so much. And that was his, in, I mean, it was clear to me from the, from the outset, his whole attitude of having a servant's heart. It was all about giving, giving value, not worry about, you know, giving other people value without, you know, looking for something in return. And so 
I mean, you know, both, I mean, when I met you a few months ago, it was clear to me as to why you and Tom, you know, hanging around, hang around each other all the time. And so I just love your all's philosophy. I mean, when I was at your all's conference as a guest speaker um, a few months ago, it just amazed me as to the amount of value that you all gave at the conference. Um, just unbelievable. So anyway, with that being said, um, so a, a lot of my followers and listeners, Cody, let me give you their background. Please. <clears throat> a lot of my followers, of course, use the private money, uh, you know, to um, buy the property versus controlling the property and assigning the deal. Now, in the mastermind that Tom and I are a member of, there's lots of wholesalers in the group that are making millions and millions of dollars. But I want you to go ahead and answer this question to, uh, to give a perspective to our audience. And here's the question. First question, on average, I mean, really, on average, and I know averages vary, vary depending on market and price point. But what would you say is the average amount of money from, say, a wholesaling deal from an assignment fee or a you know, double closing, et cetera, that a real estate investor can, you know, realistically expect to make. Yeah, I think that's that. And, and the hard thing is it is going to vary in city to city, state to state. But if I had to throw out maybe a number to give you a ballpark, I'd say between 7,000 and 13,000. Um, you definitely have California where it's not unheard of to see uh, individuals make 50, 60, $70,000 on assignments. Mm -hmm. For me specifically in Utah, I'm about an average of about 21,000 per assignment deal. Wow. Wow. Okay. That's great. So I know the answer to this question from my perspective, uh -huh. but I, I want to hear your perspective and what your answer is. So, so, so my students, uh, the, the average profit, well, I'm not my student, myself, let's just talk about me. Let's talk okay. about me. So my average profit on a deal is $64,000 over the past year. Now that deal, let's, so let, let me describe that deal so we're being totally transparent, okay? So that deal that I do that's got an average of $64,000, I buy it with private money, all right? In most cases, it needs rehabbing to some degree. Uh, typically, average rehab is going to be $25,000, $30,000. And uh, from the time that we purchase it, take control of it, get the rehab done, uh, put it on the market, sell it, et cetera. Uh, short amount on a quick flip is going to maybe be four to five months, maybe six months. We sell a lot of houses like that on rent to own to where we will put someone, you know, in the house and get it cash flowing and force them into credit repair. Then we cash out 12 to 18 months down the road. So, Let's let's weigh out the wholesaling end of the business in comparison to, you know, buying a house, doing the rehab and flipping. What would you say are the advantages? And I already hear it coming. What are the, <laughs> I already hear it coming. What are the advantages to, say, wholesaling that deal versus staying in the deal all the way to the end? Here's what I love, Jay. I think there's like 20 ways to skin a cat. And I think there's so many ways in real estate to make money. And you have a system that's set up that does it that way. And I love it. Like when I hear this, I even drew on like, man, 64,000. That's amazing, right? And so I, I love that. I really do. And for a lot of people, that's going to make sense, that road. And then there's going to be some people that are like, I know nothing about uh, fix and flip. In fact, I always say the joke. I'm like, fix and flip. If you were to take off the name badge of fix and flip underneath it, actually say adult daycare. And it, <laughs> and so I had awful experiences with it, but it, it, I think there's so many ways with real estate. That's why I want people to get into real estate because ultimately I think wholesaling is kind of like the, the, uh, almost like the gateway drug, right? It gets you involved and then you can move on to fix and flip, but wholesaling I had a, a visit with a gentleman in my uh, market that sat me down and asked this same question. And he says, Cody, why don't you do this? You have a $20,000 average spread, but why not turn it into like a 30 or 40 or 50 by rehabbing it and doing it yourself? So on average, here's how I ran the numbers. And for some people, it will make sense. But I have a process laid out so smoothly where I'm doing 
10 to 12 of these $20,000 assignments every single month. And so I look at it as a form of more, how do I get more in versus me having to deal with maybe one or two or three fix and flips over the next four or five or six months. Instead, I look at how can I do 60 wholesale deals at 20 grand in that same six month time and capitalize on what I'm really, really good at. Now, that's ultimately what it comes down to. I'm passionate about how I do it. I'm passionate about the process and it works really well for me. And then there's going to be other people that are like, oh, I don't want to wholesale 20 deals or 10 deals or 12 deals. Like that's way too much. And I get it. That's why you got to figure out where's your fit. And I think for some people and a, and a lot of people actually in this great nation, you have a process that's pretty nailed out to still make an incredible income at the end of the day. So teach their yeah. own. It's one of those things. It's a, it's a good, I love wholesaling. It's one of those things I'm just in and I'm out. <laughs> right, right. I get it. And so, you know, before you answered the question, my first uh, thought was, well, how many more deals can you do? You know, uh, wholesaling the deals, uh, you know, I mean, obviously when you're wholesaling, you don't have the entanglements of contractor problems. Uh, you don't have the uh, risk of, oh, you know, how many members of Murphy's family is going to show up on this house? <laughs> I didn't know Murphy. I mean, I mean, Murphy, li- I mean, let's face it. Murphy lives in every house. You know? In every home. Yep. I mean, you know, <clears throat> not long ago, I rehabbed a house and I mean, you know, not only Murphy showed up, but Murphy's grandparents and cousins, you know, with the foundation and the termites and all this. So, you know, when you wholesale, you, you don't have those risks. As you say, it, it comes down to what are you drawn to? Now, I've got a number of friends, and I bet you do too as well, Cody, that do both. They do That's wholesale. Correct. They fix and flip. And, and we have these formulas that decides, okay, uh, in other words, so this deal comes in, we're looking at this deal and we say, oh, okay, according to this formula, I'm going to wholesale this baby. And now, oh, according to these numbers, all right, I'm going to stay in this deal. So what I love about you and Tom and me connecting and cross-pollinating, if you will, your followers and my followers is because your all's followers and my followers and, and viewers and listeners all of us need to know uh, and be educated on both on both ends of the of, of the business, if you will. Because I mean, I mean, there's some cases where, where wholesaling makes more sense than staying in the deal, and there's sometimes you know where it makes more sense on staying in the deal. So I really want my uh, my listeners and viewers to really get tuned in on what you and Tom have got going on at Wholesaling Inc. Because there's this whole other world out there that a lot of my people haven't been, you know, exposed to. Yeah. Yeah. And I, like you said, the collaboration of both is ultimately the journey where people will be able to get to, um, as long as they stay hyper-focused. Like if I would also tell your listeners, Hey, get Jay's process down and get it dialed in and just have 100% like singular focus on that process and get that baby automated, get a team in place, get it scalable, get it to a point where, where a process truly is in place. And then you're able to bring on that second focus. I always compare it to almost like the, the a sniper versus a duck hunter. A sniper is going to shoot one bullet at a time. He's not going to put two in. He's just going to do one bullet at a time, and he's going to make sure he hits that target 100%, where a duck hunter, he's going to start shooting that shotgun, and it ends up being 10% of the BBs hit and 90% miss. And I've also have never seen a broker investor than the ones that shoot the shotgun. And so... I always say, pick your strategy and just stay true to that strategy until a process is in place, then bring on that extra strategy. So to Jay's point here, I do have some of them that I do fix and flip. It's uh, my main bread and butter is wholesaling. And then I do look at now because I have a process in place. I have a team in place. I work maybe five hours a week on wholesaling, period, the end. I have a team in place that does it. So now I'm able to really look at some of these deals and say, hey, this would be a great one to actually rehab. And some of them actually like, okay, this one is a cherry picked one for my rental. And I now have the cash flow to either buy it free and clear or be able to just buy multiple of them and have them leveraged. Awesome. All right. So now I want to start drilling down into the brain and the heart of Cody Hoffine is what I want to do. So take us back, Cody. Um, What got you interested in real estate investing and how long have you been in it? You know, I mean, how did your journey begin, if you will? Sure. 
And if I tear up, I apologize, guys. This Cody Hoffine is going to be a vulnerable, but this guy's a crier, just so you guys know. Um, my whole life in entrepreneurship, I always wanted to, I knew I didn't want to work for someone my whole life. So in 2010, I started an insurance agency and by literally the, the, just the process of going through it, I ended up, uh, insuring a bunch of, of real estate investors. And then really I was like, man, I love these guys. They're easy to work with. They do multiple transactions, which is going to require multiple policies. So multiple homes, multiple cars, they were just a better client. And so I started going to just local real estate investor associations for guilty pleasure. And that was strictly to build my insurance book. It was not to learn real estate. And just by being there and my first year in insurance, I, I really busted my tail off. I really was working so hard. I was doing like 60, 70 hours a week. And my first year I brought home $19,000, not a month for the whole 12 months. And, um, and we're this just talking 2010, right? This is 2010, $19,000. Wow, not, not, not long ago, not long ago. No, 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 definitely not. And uh, I had one kid, or I'm sorry, I had uh, two kids, one on the way, a mortgage payment. And I had to come home to my wife and say, I promise things are going to get better. And uh, she was awesome. She was supportive. So <laughs> I came home and Tom almost had the same uh, story, but really I came home one day for lunch early and my wife's head was down and she was crying and I could tell she was crying. And, uh, it was, it was tough. I asked to ask, I had to ask her what was going on in her mind. And she says, well, I don't know. I don't know how we're going to make our mortgage payment. I don't know how this is going to happen. And, uh, it happened to be that, uh, again, I believe God's hand is over so much in my life and has led me to my next step. And all these things were meant to happen in the way it happened. Um, but I ultimately, um, that night I was like, well, I'm going to go get some more policies and I'm going to do this. I'm, I'm not going to let my family starve. I'm not going to be out on the street. I'm going to do something about this. And so I went to a RIA meeting and a gentleman was talking how he just whole sold a deal and made 25 grand. And I'm like, you bugger. Like I have I made that in my whole entire, that was more than what I made in 12 months. And he made it in like 13 days. And I just like, you've got to be kidding me. And so, um, like I said, I, I truly do, uh, know that God's hand was involved in this. I need to hear that message. And it got me. So I had to maybe fast forward a little bit. This struggle continued to go on and on and on and on of not making that much money. And so that RIA meeting is now fast forward to 2015. So five years of struggling through insurance, thinking things will get better. They didn't. So 2015 went to that RIA meeting. I heard that message. And that's when I was like, I'm in the wrong industry and maybe, just maybe, this is where I'm meant to be anyways and it all added up and made sense. Um, I insured about 150 investors. So having cash buyers when I find these deals was not a problem. I knew every one of them in the state because I insured them. And so what I did is just started listening to podcasts. And uh, I knew this gentleman in Utah would not teach me because he'd be teaching his competition. <laughs> and so I got, uh, I got to listen to podcasts and everyone was interviewing Tom Kroll and this guy, like you said, I, I really have a, a huge heart for this guy. Cause he's amazing. His, uh, he's always thinking every morning wakes up. How do I help Sally, the student get their first deal? The guy's just awesome. He's just a go-giver. He's out there to bless people's lives. And so I felt that I joined his program in May of 2015 and quickly by just taking massive imperfect action, uh, my first six months, I was able to do about a quarter million dollars. And then from there, it just started where I started adding my own little, uh, my own little flavor to it. And uh, in 2016, me and Tom partnered up and have been doing Wholesaling Inc. together ever since then. And it's just been an incredible journey. But to say that it was easy, it wasn't. 19 grand doesn't allow you and your wife to go on date night other than just walking around the neighborhood. There's no money. There's no money to go out and get food together. In fact, when people would ask us, hey, Cody, you want to go out to dinner with us? We'd be like, ah, we just ate. Well, we hadn't eaten, but you can't say anything else but that. And so, uh, yeah, we were, we were broke. But I'm telling you, when you hit rock bottom, there's no better place than a solid rock to start from. And we were at rock bottom. So Yeah, I hear you, man. Well, and you know, fear of loss will motivate you a whole lot more than hope of gain. I've learned that. Also, I really appreciate you being um, straightforward and forthcoming with your faith. Um, I tell people uh, when they ask me, you know, how it is I got into private money. In my story, I tell them my, my definition of coincidence is God's way of staying anonymous. 
And so God was right in the middle of, of turning our situation down. And you know, you share your story about walking in and seeing your, your wife crying. Um, I had the same experience with Carol Joy. Uh, and it wasn't at the point in time when we were dead broke. We were making a lot of money, but our business was running us instead of our business running it. And so that's when I, I got all excited about the automation. But, you know, back to, to you sharing. Um, wow, Cody, what a story. So my question is, after hearing your story, what is it? I mean, we're just going back, you know, as of today's podcast, we're only going back three years or so since you went full time into real estate, right? That's correct. So of course, I know you had a big motivation. No question about that. Taking care of your family, big motivation, no question. But still yet, I, I know you came to a new vehicle. I know you came to a new opportunity from the insurance thing to the real estate investing thing. But really, what was it that triggered in your mind, in your heart? What is it? What is it that's different about you? I mean, let me, let me preface this question and frame it a little bit more before you answer. You know, there's a lot of people that get education for real estate investing. All right. There's a lot of people that will take education and not do anything with it. There's a lot of people that will. There's some like you that put it on steroids. What is it about you that's different that you would attribute to your success of putting this real estate investing education to work? There's a couple things. My why in an instant change. Tony Robbins talks about it's not what you want. It's what you can't live without. And so it was knowing that I can't live without my wife. I cannot live without my kids. I can't live without a safe place to, to protect our heads. And so my why shifted instantly. We were going broke. We didn't really have the money to keep doing what we were doing. And we weren't living an uh, exuberant life. We weren't living anything fancy. We we don't have cable. We still don't have cable. It's uh, it's just one of those things that, uh, what is your why? My why, I know everyone says it's just their family. But we 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 sometimes won't get uncomfortable. Hey, I can't get into real estate because I've got to do this, 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 but yet they have a $2,000 TV sitting on their wall. And it's like, how bad do you want it? Do you want Netflix more than you want financial freedom? And my why was just so crystal clear. I just wanted to be free. I didn't need to be rich. That's let's, let's get that straight. And I, I don't, it's not the money. It was I wasn't passionate about a policy. So here's my second point. I wasn't passionate about selling a policy. And that was probably the biggest problem. Insurance agents can make great money if you love what you do. And I would tell everyone on this podcast, love what you do and be passionate about it. The money will follow. This allowed me to really get inside my element, my zone, and just serve people. It has nothing to do with real estate. I think wholesaling is so um, misconceived as we're buying a home, we're buying a home. Really, what we're doing is we're helping sellers solve problems. People come to us in the 11th hour and they're saying, hey, on Friday, my home goes to an auction. Well, a real estate agent at that point can't help this individual, but Cody Hoffine can. And we go in there with the open heart, open mind to serve this individual. And the byproduct is you can get a contract that allows you to purchase the home. And that's truly how I built my business. And now it's not, it's never chasing the money. It's not chasing the paycheck. It's how do I serve the individuals of the state of Utah and truly bless them and add value to their life, irregardless if I get the business or not, still add value to them. And I have found out when I do that, the byproduct is I get contracts. And second of all, the Lord continues to bless my path. Yeah. So I think you just answered my next question partly. And my next question uh, is, well, what is it about real estate? that affords you to be so passionate that you couldn't be that passionate about in the world of insurance. So I just heard you saying, you know, the, you got a, a person or a family and the, you know, the, the 11th hour is there and their house is going to sale and, and, you know, you come to the rescue, but what is it, what are the other aspects about, I mean, I've got a lot of viewers and followers right now listening to this podcast that have never done a real estate deal before in their life. Yeah. Uh, but they're interested. OK. Yep. Uh, and they're intrigued. So in your experience, Cody, 
what what are the other ways that real estate affords you to be so passionate? Gosh, I think of something that allows you to get paid well to just love people. I don't I I know there's other jobs out there that do this, don't get me wrong, but I think if you'll twist on and put on a different hat and and here's the story I get to do in in any given day or my team gets to do in any given day. I try to tell them if their own mom came to them and told them, "Son, I've got cancer and I've got X amount of days to live and I've got to sell my house and I'm behind on my mortgage and I'm behind on taxes." Am I going to go and say, mom, okay, so tell me how many bedrooms was it again? I can't remember how many bedrooms that was on a daily basis. As if that was my mom, I get to sit down and say, how do I help you? How do I help best help you out in this time? How, how can I best serve you in this moment? Mom, I didn't know anything about this cancer. I didn't know this was going on. I didn't know you're behind a mortgage. I didn't know you're behind a ca- on your, on your taxes. And I try to find the best, even if it's not me, even if it means list this with a real estate agent, you've got time. That's going to be your highest and best. I get to do this on a daily basis. And so when I say my passion, my passion is I just genuinely get to love people, serve people. I have many people that I get to sit with and they're crying on my shoulder and I get to tell them everything's okay. I love it. No one's passionate about insurance. Let's be honest. It's the necessary evil to just protect your car when you get in an accident or your home burns down. But at the end of the day, no one's like, oh man, I love this policy. This is amazing. Talk to me, Cody. This is incredible. I, I remember I heard someone say one time that in, uh, <laughs> in order to win with insurance, you got to lose first. <laughs> <laughs> and that's true. And, and then hope this intangible product that you've been buying for 20 years actually does it. And that's so right. this is something that I get to do on a daily basis and my team gets to do on a daily basis is just love people, just serve people. And if we're not the best option, still love them, still serve them. And we get blessed and blessed and blessed for other people to find us and and referrals to come our way. It's an absolutely amazing business. Now, is that everyone's passion to just solve people's problems? I hope it is because I think that's truly the way you make money in life and that's truly how you make a living is solve problems. You're not selling a product. You're selling a solution and that's all we are every single day is a solution, a problem solver. Well, that's true. I mean, you know, I mean, people don't need us unless unless there's a problem, right? Or or a potential problem. So uh, I got my next two questions. The first question is going to enlighten and serve a new real estate investor that has never done a deal before. The question right after that is going to be for our seasoned investors, real estate investors that have done many deals. All right. So I love it. I love it. Let's do it. The question for the newbie that's never done a deal before. In your experience, Cody, and you got a lot of experience, you got a lot of students' experiences. What's the best advice that you can give for a brand new real estate investor that's never done a deal before? Holy smokes. First and foremost, quickly, and I'll go to the real point of this. If everyone's going this way, go that way. There's something going on in our world today where everyone thinks, go to college, go to college, get an education, invest in 401k. If they're doing that and everyone's doing that, ah, I'm the one to say against the contract, like, no, 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 no. Invest in yourself. Don't invest in that trillion dollars worth of national debt we have in student loans. Invest in you first and foremost. And that's scary because our school systems does not teach you to invest in you, nor does it teach you to be an entrepreneur and know that you can do this. So first and foremost, Everyone has the potential. Not everyone will, but everyone has the potential to be an entrepreneur and own their own business. And it's simple. It's simple, simple, simple. It is surrounding yourself with better people. Jim Rohn says you're the average of the five closest individuals you hang out with. It's time to level up. If your best contact goes to the bar every weekend, it's time to find a new circle. If if your best, if you are the smartest person in your circle, it's probably a time to say we need to level up. Now, it's not to say forget about your circles. It's not to say forget about your friends or your family. But if you want to be able to be a, a spiritual individual in life, Jim Rohn's not simply saying go hang out with other people that want to be spiritual. He's saying go to people that are already spiritual, that are already at the destination that you want to be at. Go surround yourself with them. You're going to see they live principles that you don't live. And as you live those principles, the likelihood of you becoming that person becomes a reality. And so think of that in every hour of your life. If you want to be a successful wholesaler, 
don't hang out with your neighbor, most likely they're going to say, are you kidding me? In 2008, did you see what happened? You're nuts. Why would you get into this industry? Don't hang around the naysayers. Hang around the yaysayers. Hang around with people that are actually doing it. So go to a wholesaler and say, man, you're successful. Start hanging out with them. Find out what you can do with them. Add value to their life. But start making your sure, whoever, whatever you want to be, whether that's fitness, whether that's spiritual, whether that's a better dad, whether that's a better em employee, make sure you're, lit, you're, you're surrounding yourself with the people that are already at the destination so you can start to see the principles that they're living. Start living those principles and you'll see that you too can become that individual quickly if you will surround yourself with them. So that's my biggest, biggest one. I love Jim Rohn. Yeah, I love Jim Rohn too. I mean, he's like one of the fathers, if not the father of personal development. Now, moving on to, by the way, I love the answer. I mean, you know, uh, we got to take inventory of where we're spending our time and who we're spending our time with. I mean, you know, uh, Carol, Joy, and I, we've got great friends at church, uh, great people. Uh, I'm thinking of some in particular that are, I mean, great spiritual faith. And, and and they're some of our best friends because of the spiritual component. Are they going to help me on the on the road to uh, wealth and freedom? No, because they're not in that mindset. That doesn't mean that they're still not great friends of mine on the spiritual end. However, I've got other friends such as Cody and Tom and some other folks that I can mention that not only have the spiritual aspect, but also have the wealth and freedom aspect as well. So as Cody just said, ask yourself, and be honest, where and who am I spending most of my time with? Now, let's move on to the seasoned investor for a moment. Now, by the way, the newbies of you, don't check out on us right here because you're going to want <laughs> to this question as well. And, you know, what I have discovered in being in the business for 15 years now, Cody, is like any other business, what worked a year ago might not be working so well today. What worked so six true. years ago might not be working so well today. Or... In addition to that, there might be a brand new strategy or resource that's really hot and is working really hot today that didn't even exist six months or a year ago. So I say that to ask you this. What are one or two or three, whatever you feel like sharing, what are one or two or three of your hottest resources, places, strategies, whatever, on finding motivated sellers? that make a great real estate investing deal, whether you wholesale it or you stay in the deal or not. I mean, that's one thing I've learned, Cody, whether you wholesale it, no matter what your exit strategy is, you're going to wholesale it, you're going to stay in the deal, you're going to wholesale it, it doesn't matter, you're going to sell it on work for equity. We still got to find the deal. What's your top favorites going on right now? Love it. Because of the market where it's at, you're not going to find those deals on the MLS. It's going to be far and few. It's going to be finding a needle in a haystack. So I would Amen, say to Amen. <laughs> so this is what directly to the time that we're in right now. So I love that the fact that this may not be the strategy five years from now. It's okay. But right now, the strategy is you have to get them off market. How do we get them off market? I simply you know what, tell everybody what off market means. Yeah, off market means it simply hasn't been brought to public knowledge through a real estate agent and put on the MLS. It's literally I'm marketing to the whole state of Utah saying Hey, my name's Cody, and I do this through a postcard. This is simple, guys. Here's some instant value that I'll give free of charge. I'm not going to charge a thing for it. It's simply just a postcard that says handwriting, right? Like it's like a handwritten postcard. Nothing fancy. It's not going to be like a spider placed on it that's upside down dead that people are like, oh, another termite guy that wants to spray my house, and they throw it in the garbage. No, it's not going to be a house with the hands receiving cash. Everyone knows they're getting marketed by a real estate agent. No, no, no. Keep it simple where they have to read the message. Handwritten font and just simply say, my name's Cody. I'm looking to buy your home at 123 Main Street for a cash offer. Reach out me at 801, blah, 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 right? And that's it. And so we get a bunch of phone calls. A lot of them say, go pound sand. A lot of them say swear words on there. And it's okay. I'm fine. Because the one phone call closer to the one that says, guess what? I'm behind on my taxes. I'm behind on my mortgage. Hey, I'm going through divorce. Hey, I uh, have this home that's going through probate. None of us siblings want to touch it because it is horrendous and no one can buy it on the real estate market anyways because it can't qualify for a conventional loan. All of this happens, but you won't get those phone calls if you don't commit to marketing to these individuals. So here's where I would market. With a simple handwritten postcard, this isn't it, but I wanted to show it's so simple that it really should be a, just a simple handwritten card. Uh, but secondly, 
find a, a very uh, a niche list that shows distress, right? So you're looking for motivated sellers. You're not looking for Jay Connor. I'm not looking for a retail seller. I'm looking for a motivated seller. How I do that is go to like your local city, municipality, county, township, and ask for the tax delinquent list. People that are simply behind on taxes and then send them that postcard and see if they're open for a cash offer on their home. That's as simple as it gets. That's one list that has produced well over a million dollars in the last three years for my company. That one list. Um, that's one. Probate, eviction, code violation. These are all lists that you can get for free from your county, city, township, uh, municipality. These are all free lists that's public information that you can then simply send a postcard to asking if they want to sell their home for cash. Now, when you say code violation, tell our viewers and uh, listeners, what's a, a, an example or two of a code violation? Yeah, in Utah, and it's going to vary maybe from state to state, but in Utah, once it passes X amount, your grass, and it's like now at like 12 inches, the city's like, woo, 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 like cut that down or you're going to get a fine. And so usually it just shows that there's deferred maintenance. And usually you'll find out that that high grass also has a bad roof and a boarded up backyard window. And so code violations can come from boarded up windows. The city doesn't like that. They want windows on there, not boards. Um, it could be that there's four cars parked in the, in, the, in the middle of the lawn when they're supposed to be on concrete in the driveway. Um, there's so many forms of code violations. So if you can get your, a hold of that, usually that leads to A, a distressed property and B, a motivated seller. Awesome. Um, before we wrap up, Cody, in my lands, I could talk to you for hours. Mercy. Um, I love the energy and even more so than that. I mean, the, the experience and knowledge that you have gained just in the past three years as of the day of this podcast is amazing. So let's talk about uh, your mindset a little bit. So we're going to have to wrap up in about five minutes or so. So I want to get in as much as we can within the next five minutes. Um, so do you have any daily personal routines or daily habits or daily rituals that you would say uh, really um, attribute uh, towards your success? Yes, yes, and yes. In fact, without it, there's no way I could do what I do. So I now have four kids and it is four no more, guys. This guy's done. So four kids. And if I allow my day to start when their day starts, which is around 7, 7.30, that day is a complete wreck. And I never really turn the dial to a better Cody that day. So I am all about waking up at least an hour, but I try to get up around 5.30 or 6 every single day. And I use that time, A, first and foremost, to I, I say my, my, my morning prayer, that's my time to show gratitude and, and pray for individuals in my life and to just bless and watch over my day, right? So first and foremost, that goes down. Secondly, is also be spiritually fed. So go to the scriptures and start learning. Third is read a good book. And I'm going to announce a couple in the end, and I, we're going to talk about this, but read a good self-help book. I'm not a Harry Potter fan or anything of, a, of fictional or anything like that. I like things that are really going to help me become better. I believe this life is a life to progress. And so I want to make sure I'm reading quality content, uh, content that helps me progress. But I have found out if I can win the first hour of the day, I win the day. But when I don't win that first hour of the day, I don't win the day. And it's every love, single time. I love that, Cody. I mean, it's like the first hour of the day sets the course, frameworks the entire rest of the day. And uh, I love the quote you just said. Own the first hour, you own the day, right? That's right. That is correct. And that's the same for even people in working out. If you work out in the morning, you're going to eat a lot better during the day because you've already put forth the work. But when you haven't worked out that day, it's like, eh, I'm going to eat like garbage for the next four hours because I'm going to work out tonight. I and mean, you can't outwork bad eating, period, the end. So win the first hour of the day and you win the day. Test that. Try it. I am not saying other than I challenge you to do it and see how this literally will take place in your life. Um, but yeah, that's, that's my morning ritual. And then from there, I love family time. My, my calling in life is to be an amazing husband, an amazing father. I'm not perfect at it. I fall short every single day, but I'll be darned if I don't 
at least try my absolute best to, I, I love it. I get to make breakfast for my kids every single day. Wow. Um, I get to, uh, I get to take my kids and drop them off at school. And we go over affirmations on the way to school before I drop them off. Hey guys, how's school going to be? And they go over their affirmations on how it's going to be a great day and we're going to find the good. And it's, it's awesome. We just, we, we, we do all this fun stuff. I get to be part of this every single day. I don't have to go fess up to a boss and be in at seven in the morning and then come home at six at night and get one hour with my kids before they go to bed. I get to do, and, and I get to, I get to go in the office when I want to go in. And that's after my family responsibilities are taken care of. Then I go in and take care of my, what is my third priority? And that would be work, but really it's God, family work in that order. And when I do those things, gosh, am I perfect? And are, are all my days perfect? No, I'd be lying to you, but uh, they are uh, a lot more of them go the way I need them to go when I do it that order. You say you normally get up between five thirty and six in the morning. When do you normally go to bed at night? Uh, that's another secret in life. So no later than 10 lights out. So that's kind of our thing is, uh, me and Wendy, we have, uh, or my wife, we have, uh, what we call pillow talk where we can just sit there and chat and talk about the kids and, and strategize on, Hey, um, Cody, uh, when you got home, you were frustrated at Bentley and you, and you kind of said it like in a loud voice. I think you could have done better had you just taken them on a walk and just talked with them. And I'm like, you're absolutely right, sweetheart. So we have pillow talk, uh, but literally 10 o'clock hits and it's like lights off because we got to wake up early in the morning again and start working on us. Gotcha. When do you plan your day? When do you plan your work day? I actually plan it. Some people do it the night before. I do it in the morning. So in that power hour, hour and a half, That's part of the plan is, and I I don't lay out every hour. I think uh, I used to do that and it failed me miserably. I just pick out if I can do one thing and if I can do two or three, great. But if I can at least do one thing and it would change everything, it would help in the family. It would help in the business. It'd help in my role and responsibilities with God. That one thing, if I can focus and hone in like a sniper, one bullet at a time, I find out that I am doing more for my day Then if I try to do and nail and conquer like five things, six things, seven things, I usually start shooting the shotgun and all the BBs don't hit. So I try to focus on at least one thing. And if I can get two or three, I'll do it. Well, you know what? You're like Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett uh, for years has written one thing on his index card. uh, And that's all he would allow. Of course, he can make his list, you know, but he brought it down to one thing. So when it comes to um, books, uh, my best guess is you are a personal development junkie. Yes. 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 yes and yes. With like a, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I got a two part question for you when it comes to book. Okay. And that is other than the Bible, we know the Bible has had more profound effect on your life and mine than any of the book that's hands down. Other than the Bible, What book has had the most impact on your life? And the second part of that question is what recent book have you come across that you're really excited about and reading and why? Okay. So the first one, a couple years back, this one was game changing. I think that word is used way too much and it's it's, it's my fault. I use it daily. Uh, Game changing is The Compound Effect by Darren Hardy. This book put everything into motion. Now, when real estate, everyone talks about rich dad, poor dad, and I get it. I read that at a young age. Compound effect just talks about doing the small and simple things that make the big difference between a small company and a great company. It's not big things. It's not like grandiose things. It's not, it's just small and simple, staying consistent on the small and simple things. And it's simple to do, but it's just as simple not to do is what Darren teaches us. So if you will stay small, uh, consistent at marketing, consistent at returning phone calls, consistently going on appointments, consistently getting contracts, consistently getting paid, and then just go through and consistently make sure you're doing those things. Pretty soon you start to move that train. You're pushing that train and pretty soon it starts to gain momentum. And then we call it big Mo from Darren Hardy. Big Mo comes in momentum and starts to help push that train. That's when things really start to take off. So think back to when you read the book, The Compound Uh Effect. Can you remember, of course you can, but can you share with us uh, one specific thing that you implemented from that book that you learned to do that really made a big difference? Yeah, it was the power of becoming someone better. 
I used to, and he uses a powerful example. He uses how he wanted to find his wife and he wrote a 40 page document. And you heard this at the, at the seminar, he wrote a 40 page document about my wife's going to be this, 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 this. And then he heard words from Jim Rohn that says, basically we get what we want in life when we become the person worthy of it. And so all of a sudden he's like, oh my goodness, like all of a sudden is a paradigm shift. And he wrote a 40 page document on who he would need to become to be worthy of a person of that caliber of that he was looking for. And he began working on that list of 40 things of what he would need to become. And he says within a couple of years, he found the wife of his dreams and it's eerie how close it was to that 40 page document. So I, I started realizing quickly, if I want something, if I want to make an extra hundred grand this year, it's who do I need to become to be another hundred grand more valuable to the marketplace? If I want to uh, meet someone of a high caliber, it's who do I need to become? It's not how do I get my face in front of them? That's not going to do anything. It's who do I need to become that would make that high caliber individual say, yeah, come join me for dinner. We have to become individuals and be be worthy of what it is that we're looking for in life, if that makes sense. And so that was something I had to work on instantly. It wasn't about this want, want, want. It was who do I need to become to be of value to receive whatever it is that I'm looking for. That's powerful, Cody. Now, the other question is uh, a recent book that's having a big impact. Yes, I am reading one right now that is literally changing my life. Key Persons of Influence. So key person of influence, Kevin Harrington and Daniel Priestley. And it is just, instead of KPI being like key performance indicators, which every business owner knows, it's key person of influence. And it's basically being the authority like yourself, Jay, in the private money area. It's being the authority in your market. So it's great to say, hey, I'm in the niche of real estate, but really be a key person of influence in the micro niche, which is private lending. You're in real estate, but your micro niche is private lending, where mine is wholesaling. So yes, the niche is real estate. You won't see me go outside the box and try to coach five things. I coach one thing. Our micro niche is wholesaling. And this book teaches you how you need to literally bring it down to a micro niche and become the key person of influence because 80% of the wealth is distributed amongst the top 20%. That's interesting. And the reason is, once you're a key person of influence, all the opportunities start to come to that inner circle, the key people of influence, right? And so Jay is getting opportunity after opportunity after opportunity because he works so hard to establish his key. He's a key person of influence in the private lending space. So when people are like, hey, I have this deal, oh, I'm going to call Jay. And if Jay doesn't want it, guess who gets it? You guys. But that means it's a poor deal. A good deal comes to the key people of influence, and Jay's one of those, and that's why a good deal, you're not going to pass on. You're going to be like, yeah, I like this opportunity. Ah, I don't like this opportunity. Well, then I guess I'll tell everyone outside the circle, here's a great deal, guys, and that's all you're seeing if you're not the key person of influence. Ooh, my lands. I know my executive producer that is recording this show right now is like going, my lands, I thought Jay Connor had the energy, but you got it, man. <laughs> so, Cody, uh, as we wrap up, as we wrap up, I know my viewers and listeners are wanting to stay in contact with you. So how can they uh, reach out to you? How can they continue the conversation? How can they follow you? I mean, yeah. you've, got a, you've got an awesome podcast show yourself. Um, Which you've been I'm, on. Yep, yep. So tell everybody how to, how to get connected with you. Definitely, definitely go over to the podcast app, go to iTunes and, and start listening, subscribe to our podcast, Wholesaling Inc., Wholesaling I-N-C. Um, you can reach us at wholesalinginc.com, so wholesalinginc.com, and you can definitely follow us on Facebook. So Tom Kroll has obviously his uh, Tom Kroll on Facebook, um, as well as at Wholesaling Inc. for Instagram. Mine is just simply Cody Hoffine. Um, there'll be show notes, but it's H-O-F-H-I-N-E. But you can follow me on Facebook. And then my Instagram handle is at Cody Hoffine. Super, super simple. But definitely follow us. All I am about, Jay, and much like you, and this is why I love hanging out with people like you and like-minded individuals, is I'm just here to add value. At the end of the day, you're not going to be sold on anything. I'm not here to fetch credit cards. It's how do I just serve you, add value to your life, and if I can accomplish that, I feel like I've done my job. Absolutely. Well, Cody, it has been more than a pleasure. It's been exciting to have you on here as the uh, as a guest. And 
parting comments before we uh, say goodbye on this show? Man, I would tell each and every one of you, take in the, the attitude of progress, not perfection. You don't need to be perfect. None of us are perfect. There's been one person on this earth that walked it perfectly. So don't go through and look for a perfect plan. It doesn't exist. Just take massive, imperfect action, and you will be 10 times further than the person that takes no action at all that's sitting on their couch. You will learn from it. You will, you will grow from it, and it will teach you your next step you need to take. Our mistakes are going to be your greatest coaching moments. Um, so that's first and foremost is go out and make mistakes daily. Fail your way forward, and they can either knock you out and make you think, oh, I'm not supposed to go on this journey, or you can use them for what they're really for, and that is get better, get stronger, learn from what it was so that you can do it better next time. Cody, thank you so much. I love the advice of taking massive, imperfect action. And what I love about that is a lot of people give the advice to take massive action. But what holds people back is that fear of making a mistake, make a fear of, hey, guess what? As you just said it, Cody, we're going to make a mistake. I mean, how do we get good at something? I get good at something and being bad at it first, right? That's how I got really good at private money. You and I also doing well. I love to take massive and perfect action. So, Cody, thank you again for being on the show. And to all of our viewers and listeners, thank you so much for tuning in. I know you have enjoyed this show in particular. If you're watching us on YouTube, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out for any future shows that we have coming along. You can comment below uh, here on YouTube with any uh, questions you have about real estate investing. We'll get all those answered. And, uh, and of course, uh, rate us. If you're listening on iTunes, be sure to subscribe, rate, and review. We love your comments. With that, thank you for joining in. Tony, thank you so much. I'm Jay Connor, the Private Money Authority, wishing you and being with you and taking you to the next level in your real estate investing career. Bye for now.